Welcome to It Ain't Rocket Science. I'm Adam Balkin. Spring is here at last. And in light of Earth Month, we're going to take a look at ways that being environmentally conscious can open up new doors and opportunities for students like you to make your mark in science, technology, engineering, and math. In this episode, we'll check out some ways going green can help you reduce your carbon footprint while earning some serious cash doing it. We'll take a look at some unique endeavors and introduce you to some students whose technical know-how may leave you green with envy. Take a look at how few young engineers are getting a taste of professional engineering through on-the-job training in North Carolina, and take a peek at the future of coding as these young hackers code their way into careers. All part of Time Warner Cable's Connect a Million Minds initiative to get you educated and interested in science, technology, engineering, and math opportunities in your community. For many students in the big city, it's hard to examine nature because it's either obscured by a big building or suffocated by exhaust. But for some students in Brooklyn, they were able to turn their classroom into an environmental incubator. Anthony Pascal has a story. It's a chance to get up close and personal with nature without leaving the comfort of the classroom. The new aquaponics and hydroponics lab at Abe Stark Primary School in Brooklyn, New York, gets kids excited about science and sustainability. I like it because it's like all new ideas, all kinds of experiments, it's so fun. We're learning like how to grow more plants to make the city be a more beautiful place. Students helped cut the ribbon to the new classroom and had a blast exploring their new workspace. Educators say it's the hands-on approach that makes this learning model successful. When they do it with their hands first, then they want to read a book after that. Then they want to know more about it. Students will get the chance to study the way plants and fish grow and even grow their own in this laboratory environment. Yeah, it will be really fun so we can make all kinds of things. We have all kinds of experiments. We learn um, all these different things that we never knew. Uh, there's a lot of science and measurements and math that goes on to this process that the kids won't even realize they're absorbing because it's really fun. Randy and his team at Skyponics helped to build the classroom laboratory with help from a grant from eBay. He says he hopes his contribution will help these students towards future careers in green technology. But for now, these youngsters will continue to nurture the seeds for future STEM careers in their new aquaponics lab. For It Ain't Rocket Science, I'm Anthony Pascal. And Abe Stark isn't the only school honing in on going green. While the University of Connecticut's Huskies just took home both men's and women's NCAA championships a few weeks ago, their basketball players aren't the only students on campus soaring to new heights. The university is a hub for research into renewable energy with a number of students working on cutting edge clean energy technology. Technology like hydrogen fuel cells. The man in charge of the lab says the research students are doing here is pushing the envelope in the renewables industry. We solve the problem, we come up with the best material that is out there and we send it to uh, industry to implement that. It's not easy. Dr. Singh says the problems his students deal with can take decades to solve and cover a range of disciplines. Maybe it's a greenhouse gas, maybe it's a temperature, maybe it's a weather, uh, many aspects of that. And even though they're doing impressive work right now, they are in some ways merely setting the stage for future exploration. Our next generation of students must be better than us. In the meantime, the lab houses a practical application of the students' work. Dr. Singh and team get to take this around for test drives a ride powered solely by clean energy. When our students, uh, high school, middle school students, visit us, we take this out and they take it for a spin. The Center for Clean Energy Engineering is making great strides in the U.S. for clean energy solutions, but its Uber counterpart in Germany is really setting the standard for the future of renewable energy technology. Solar panels, biomass, windmills, when it comes to renewable energy, Germany's got it. Social, political, and political reality has pushed Germany to the forefront in the world's race for new green technologies. A lot of that innovation happens here at the Fraunhofer Institute for Solar Energy Systems, where they're developing new ways to make photovoltaic cell technology, or those solar panels you see, more effective. But researchers and scientists here say it's you that will determine the future of the renewables industry. Many, many 
future inventions and technology development is needed. And I, from my experience, this is a topic where many, many young children say, I'm very happy to work in this field because I know I do something good for the planet. Everywhere you go in Germany, you see ways innovations in renewable tech are being implemented. Even drive through the countryside, you can see that this is a country dedicated to becoming energy independent. Take, for instance, this house. They call it the heliotrope. It spins on its axis to let in or keep out sun, depending on the season, in order to heat or cool the home. And the solar panel on the roof spins independently to soak in the sun's rays throughout the day. It attracts visitors from around the globe, including this group of students who are here from France, learning about the heliotrope. I think it's good uh, for the future uh, generation uh, to learn uh, to preserve the nature. They are our future and so uh, for us it's very important to uh, teach them to be, to, uh, uh, to, um, to be careful about the environment. While Germany may be ahead of the curve on renewables, there's still enormous opportunity for you to create the next innovation today. And Germany leads the way in more than just renewables. In fact, it's leading in a number of STEM fields. Many of these advances are collaborations with scientists and engineers here in the U.S. In one case, a few students got the opportunity to get on-the-job experience from one German global corporation doing its part to train the future STEM workforce. Agnes Chung has a story. A typical day of school for these young engineers isn't what you'd expect of your average high school or college student. But for these go-getters, it's just another day on the job. It's all part of an apprenticeship program at Siemens Energy in Charlotte. They take kids out of high school, usually during their senior year or right after they graduate, and they put them on the shop floor for most of the time, where they learn from a mentor in different departments and all the production lines that are here. The focus is on job readiness. Siemens is a global technology company and developed its U.S. apprenticeship program centered on its German-based model, which trains approximately 10,000 people each year. Students participating in the program work on the production floor and attend classes at the Central Piedmont Community College. They even earn a salary starting at $55,000 a year. I'm only 19 years old, about to be 20, so making a very decent salary for my age is you, you can't beat that. For Hope, it was love at first sight. After I saw this place, I immediately signed up for the internship and did a six-week internship, and then they offered us the four-year apprenticeship. And other student apprentices say it's equally as rewarding. For Joseph, his work with these machines reminds him of his love of sculpting. The traits of starting with nothing and making something out of it, it's kind of like having a raw piece of stock and machining it to the the mention of the drawing. Hope says the hands-on and in-class combination really makes a difference. It's, it's nice that we're actually going to a class, learning something in a book, and then coming here and doing what we just learned in a book. About 85% of the students who do apprenticeships at Siemens go on to work within the Siemens network. For It Ain't Rocket Science, I'm Agnes Chung. We do have to stop here for a quick break. Coming up, though. These students are taking a crack at coding and programming their way into future careers. And we'll hear from a few tech execs who've got advice for these would-be coders. And later, it's all about the competition, gracious of course, as we check in with students at the Rube Goldberg Machine Contest in Wisconsin. Find more science, technology, engineering, and math opportunities like this in your community. Visit connectamillionminds.com during the break.